Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. So we're gonna talk about rose fragrances today. I absolutely love fragrances that have that note. I think the smell of rose can smell so different depending on what it's blended in with and what type of rose is being used. I don't know too much about, you know, what different types of roses smell like. I kind of have a general idea, but I'll leave that up to the pros to kind of explain that. Um, but to me, the note of rose is just so multifaceted. I love how it can be really deep and sensual and really thick and just jammy sometimes. And then other times it can be really green and fresh and lighter. I love that you can really pick out different characteristics of rose just depending on how it's used in a fragrance. So I have a variety of fragrances that have that note. I will share the fragrances from my collection that have a dominant note of rose. I have other ones that have rose more like a supporting player, but these are the ones that I gravitate towards if I'm really craving the smell of rose and I want to smell like roses. The funny thing is earlier in my perfume journey, I used to uh, avoid fragrances that had this note. And I think it's because a lot of people I knew who weren't necessarily fans of fragrances would associate the smell of roses with being old fashioned or being older and mature. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being older or being more experienced. I mean, I love my grandmothers, for example. I think they're the two coolest ladies I know. Um, but for some reason, a lot of people see that as being a pejorative thing, especially when describing fragrances. And back then, earlier in my perfume journey, I wanted to smell more modern uh, and, and younger, I guess. But I'm, I've come to that point now where I've smelled so many fragrances and I've realized that rose can smell like different things, as I had mentioned. And I really started to appreciate this note more. And also I stopped caring about what other people would think if I am wearing something I enjoy. So let's get on to the fragrances. And I can confidently say that these are ones that I really, really enjoy for the most part. So I'm gonna pick these out in no particular order. Maybe at the end I might pick my top three, but I don't think I can rank all of them right now. So. Let's start off with this one. This is from Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria line, and it's Flora Rosa. It is now discontinued, so I apologize if you're trying to look for it, but I think I've seen this pop up on guilt.com and it might come up on fragrancenet.com as well. But this one is one of my more basic rose fragrances. There's not much going on with this. It's a nice, pleasant, floral, fruity fragrance. Uh, so there is this fresh rose in it. I get a little bit of tartness from this red berry that almost reminds me of cranberries. And there is a white musk in the base too, as well as a little hint of purple florals, maybe iris, to kind of add a little bit of a powdery touch. But for the most part, this is a very clean and fresh fragrance that is best worn in the summertime. This would definitely get lost in the cold air if I were to wear it in the winter. The reason why I used up so much of this is because I actually used it as a gym scent when I used to go to the gym regularly pre-pandemic and I felt like it was light enough to wear for that type of occasion. This one was one I almost decided to sell or give away because I didn't think there was a lot going on in this. It's not the most remarkable rose fragrance especially if you compare it to some of the deeper ones that I own. But the reason why I kept this is because this is probably the only perfume I could wear if I have a migraine or if I'm feeling sick. And while I probably shouldn't wear any perfumes if I'm feeling that way, I do crave, you know, the feeling of smelling good. And this is so non-offensive that I can wear it and it won't bother me at all, if, even if I have the worst of headaches. So this is why I still have it and I'll keep this bottle um, till I finish it. And I don't know if I'll repurchase it. I might find a replacement for this, but for, for now I will keep it because of what I use it for. A fresh rose fragrance I do really love is this one from Ducita, La Duceur du Siam. And this was the first ever one I bought and tried from this brand. So this fragrance, 
is just a heavenly type of rose. It's a fresh rose and it's blended in with these beautiful yellow florals. And I'm not gonna say that the, the yellow flowers smell realistic in this fragrance. It's not like you're smelling those flowers up close. To me, it's more like it's giving the feeling that I get when I smell those flowers. It lifts up my spirits. It kind of gives hints of those flowers. But the thing I enjoy most about it is how the notes are just blended in so seamlessly. It's like seeing these pastel paint colors blended in and swirled together. So I really love this uh, and it also kind of gives me this feeling of opulence in a way where it's not pretentious but it's it's classy but dainty at the same time. There's a delicateness to this and because of that I think this is great to wear in the spring and the summer. I think it really sings in the heat especially so I reserve it for the hotter months, although I have put this on in colder days when I'm just craving rose and bright florals. So I highly recommend trying this if you haven't already. So um, in terms of whether or not I would buy a bottle again, I most likely will, although I have tried Fleur de Lalita, which is very similar to this. I might go with that next because that is a jasmine fragrance with galbanum or galbanum. And, you know, if I wanted a change, I might go with that instead, but I think this will always have my heart. Let's talk about my scent of the day. I'm wearing Amouge Lyric Woman, and I am smelling it on myself, and it smells fantastic. It is stunning. I absolutely love this fragrance. So this is just so sumptuous, very mysterious. Uh, it kind of is haunting in a way. There is something kind of naughty and a little wrong about this. And I say that because I get hints of something that smells like almost like rotten fruit or over ripened fruit. And it kind of pairs really well with the rose. The rose that I get from this is not like the roses I mentioned. It's almost like a dried wilted rose that has been powderized along with these really invigorating spices and I think the spices that are used in this are quite interesting and in how they're paired together so I believe there's cardamom and ginger and maybe a little bit of cinnamon too which I think all together it kind of adds this warming but cooling effect so I think that's really interesting about this as I mentioned this is quite haunting I don't know if you've seen um, the film Mulholland Drive, but there is this scene from that movie that really stuck out to me. And while it's not the most graphic of the scenes from that movie, it's stuck with me in a way where it was haunting me. Um, it's the part where the two female characters go into this theater and then they hear or they see this woman who's singing the Spanish version of crying and uh, she like drops dead on the stage, but her voice keeps singing. That's the feeling I get from this. It is kind of surreal in a way, really dark, and again, it almost feels wrong when I smell it, but it's wrong but right in how everything is just put together in this fragrance. And I think that's what appeals to me about this fragrance. Another rose fragrance that I have is from Maison... Francis Kerjean, à la rose. So I know um, they've had a few flankers that have come out. There's one that came out for men, uh, is it L'Homme à la rose? And then there is a low version of this, which is supposedly a lighter version. I haven't tried the men's version properly, so I don't want to comment on that. Um, I have tried the low version though, and I think it's okay. Uh, this in itself is already a basic rose fragrance. There's not much going on. It's not something I would put on myself if I want something complex, but it, it works on work days especially. I want a basic rose sometimes, and the thing that I like about this compared to other basic rose soliflores is the white musk that's in this. Francis Kejon knows how to do synthetic musks really well, and I am not a huge fan of his house, 
as you can see i don't own a lot of his fragrance i think this is the only one i have and i just don't have an interest in his fragrances they don't really work that well for me uh, they don't move me that much but this one for some reason i really enjoy because i just love how the rose smells with the musk and the rose in this is very uplifting it's bright it's a little bit citrusy in the beginning um and then it dries down with the musk and it kind of gives this clean feeling so this is why i love wearing this to work uh it's one that i also wear if i just want to be cheered up and i want to smell like roses so you can't really go wrong with this, although it is quite expensive, which is why I only have the smaller bottle of this. Will I repurchase this? Um, I think there are other rose fragrances I might want to try to replace this once I finish it off, but for the time being, I will enjoy wearing this. Next I have Gris Dior from the private line from Christian Dior, and I used to own a decant of this when it was still called Green Montagne. And I don't think there's much of a difference. I, I would argue that there wasn't really much of a reformulation since they changed the name. I'm sure maybe some things got changed, but not significantly enough for me to notice it. So uh, Gris Dior is a very crisp rose. I know Cherie from the top note had mentioned this fragrance and said the same thing, and I completely agree with her thoughts on this. It's crisp, it gives this feeling of being on a snowy mountain where you're really feeling the cold air. I think the name for this is perfect. Um, it kind of gives that gray feeling, uh, but not in a gloomy way. It's more like just feeling refreshed from feeling the cold air. And I kind of picture this red crisp rose magically growing in snow. And there's also a hint of oak moss in this too, which I think kind of gives almost like a salty brininess sometimes that I get from that note. It's not animalic. I don't think it's dirty at all. It's more clean than anything, but I think the oak moss kind of adds a, like a different dimension to it that makes it a lot more interesting. And the interesting thing about the rose too is that it kind of smells fruity to me. It smells like frozen strawberries. So I, I'm not sure how it does that, but uh, it, it does give that cooling fruity nuance to it. So I think this is just an interesting fragrance that I love to wear almost year round. Uh, I think it would probably do better in the transition seasons. It could get lost a little bit when it's too cold and it might get too sweet in the, the summer, um, but for the fall and spring, I think this is perfect. Let's move on to this artisanal fragrance. I have Honoré from Maison de Darius, and this is my Rose Oud in my collection. I have tried so many from other brands. I actually really love Oud Ispahan from Giorg, but on my skin, the Oud really comes forward in a way where it can smell fecal, and I feel very self-conscious when I wear that. I have also tried Rose de Arabie from um, Armani Privé, and this kind of smells similar to that, but there's something about the oud in that just that just didn't work. It was too oud forward, I think. So I wanted a fragrance that had rose oud, but had a perfect balance between the two. So when I tried the sample pack from this brand, I was pleasantly surprised when I tried this one out. I loved it right away. I felt like this is the rose oud that I needed in my collection that was missing. The thing I also like about this is that it kind of adds or it has this uplifting uh, grapefruit note in the beginning. It kind of makes it um, lighter. And then the development is really interesting as well. It kind of gets deeper and deeper as I wear it. And out of all the fragrances in my collection, this is probably one of my strongest ones. It lasts, it could probably last for more than two days, uh, especially if I spray it on clothing. And uh, it also can project a lot. So one spray of this is enough for me. I will probably take forever to finish this, but it's one that I would reserve for special occasions, especially if I'm gonna be in a place with a lot of people where I kind of want to be able to smell myself still. Next is one of my favorites. It's Northern Noir from Tom Ford. I will link my full review where I compare this to Cafe Tuberosa, uh, but this one, 
I just love it. It's a great olfactory representation of what Valentine's Day should be. It is sensual. It is seductive. Oh my gosh. It, it just takes my breath away every time I put this on and smell it. I love the sweetness of the rose. This is probably my favorite take on the Gourmandi Rose fragrance. There have been so many that have come out, but this is the one for me. And I just love how it makes me feel too. It makes me feel confident and very sexy, I would say. Another Gourmandi Rose fragrance I have is La Petite Robe Noir Couture. So this is nowhere near the level of Nord de Noir in my opinion. I much prefer the Tom Ford fragrance, but there is a time and a place to wear this, I think. It is enjoyable to wear and easy to wear uh, for casual occasions. Uh, I often get compliments when I wear this, surprisingly. I normally don't get compliments from other people besides my husband. I think my husband knows to compliment me because he knows I enjoy that. But if I'm out and about in public, um, normally doesn't happen. But this is one that people seem to enjoy smelling on me for some reason. And it could be because it is mainstream smelling. It's crowd pleasing. It smells somewhat familiar because it is a Fruit Truly scent. And there's a lot of Fruit Truly fragrances right now, uh, especially ones that came out maybe 10 years ago. But uh, this is a little bit different because it kind of has like this laundry clean smelling aspect to it too. I had pictured like a jar of jelly, like a, a berry jelly, maybe raspberry, and there's hints of like a rose water smell to it too. And then I imagine that jar being covered by a fabric softener and it's because of that laundry clean smelling note that I get from this and I think there's there might be the synthetic musk that's in this that's giving me that and there's also oak moss in it too that adds a different dimension to it kind of makes it a little bit scratchy along with the patchouli but the oak moss um obviously it's not real oak moss but I think it kind of gives this a uh, similar feeling to what I get from Mitsuko just a hint of it it's like a nod to that fragrance so I appreciate that about this fragrance. All right, so I have three more to go. Let's do this one next. Oliban from Keiko Meshri. This is a brand that's not really talked about as much anymore. A lot of blogs used to cover this. Uh, it was also mentioned a lot in the perfume guide from Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez, but not a lot of people talk about it anymore and I'm not sure why. So Oliban to me, is a really sexy rose and olibanum fragrance. I love the way those two smell together in this fragrance. The rose in this is quite sweet, which can be off-putting to some. Uh, it can be a little bit candy sweet, uh, but I like the dirtiness of the resins that I get from this. It is a little bit animalistic in a way. Uh, it kind of gives this sense of being a little bit, yeah, dirty and maybe slightly unwashed. Um, but I think it kind of adds like a sensuality to it that's almost taboo. And maybe that's why this appeals to me. I imagine a really dark room that's set up in a romantic way, maybe with some candles. The, the candles is something I picture when I smell this because there's a waxiness that I get from this that I think is quite interesting. Um, so I think this is great for going to bed um, on a romantic night and it's perfect for the colder months. I think this might be too much and too strong for the hotter months. But yeah, totally appropriate for fall and winter in my opinion. Let's move on to a green rose and I think my most favorite fragrance in that category has to be this one from Diptyque. This is L'Ambre dans l'eau or the shadow in the water. And I have the solid perfume. I do have samples of the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum, both of which I really, really like. But for some reason, I really like the solid perfume. I think this works quite well and it's cheaper than buying the bottles. Uh, this, um, this is what the solid perfume looks like inside. Uh, this actually surprisingly 
performs quite well. I get about six hours, seven hours sometimes. And the production is decent. I could smell it on myself even when I'm wearing a mask. So I know I've gotten some questions about the solid perfumes from this brand and that's my experience just from this one. So L'Ambretan Lo appeals to me because the greenness that I get from it is very reminiscent of my grandpa's tomato garden. I love the smell of tomato leaves. In fact, I have a candle from Carrier Frère that smells like tomato leaf. And I just find that smell to be so happy and uplifting. It really cheers me up and it brings me back to my grandpa's house. So I like that aspect of this. The rose is a fruitier uh, take on the rose. I think there is a black currant in this fragrance as well. So it kind of adds that juiciness to it. And uh, this is a fragrance that I would probably wear year round. I think most people would probably save it for the summertime. And it does smell summery, so that makes sense. But there is something about the, the juiciness of the rose that reminds me of holly berries in the holidays. So I also like to wear this around Christmas time too. And the greenness from the tomato leaves also help with that feeling. So I recommend um, checking this out in any of their forms, the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, or this solid perfume version. Uh, and I think it's worth testing out at least. Last, I have Rose 1845 from Lazarus DeVos, and this is a fairly new brand. This fragrance actually just came out last year, and uh, Lazarus DeVos, if you're not familiar with him, he is a famous hairstylist. So he actually has a few hair products uh, in his line. I actually have the hair oil, which I love. I love how that smells, um, and the smell of that really appealed to me so much that I wanted to try this. And then I had a sample and then ended up buying a full bottle. Rose 1845 is a really lush rose fragrance. I can tell that a lot of the rose that I get from this is from like natural sources of rose. And there's also uh, quite a bit of immortelle in this. But the Immortelle is kind of honeyed in a way. I think there's benzo in this too. So it kind of adds this sticky nature to it. But the Immortelle adds this nice spiciness to the rose. And the whole composition itself is just so smooth, so silky, and so enjoyable to wear. The story that this is based on is quite interesting. I think you should read about it on the official website. But it's almost like this forbidden type of romance, and I think this captures that story quite well. So those are all my rose forward fragrances. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, let me know in the comments below what rose fragrances you really like. And I guess now I will talk about my top three. This might be kind of hard to do, but let's try. So I think an obvious choice is Noir de Noir from Tom Ford. I think part of the reason why I am ranking this in my top three is because I just have a special attachment to this. It's been one that I've loved for many years now. And you probably could tell by how I was talking about this. I love Amouage Lyric Woman. Definitely my top three. And I don't know if I should go with my new one. I guess for now, let's put this in my top three. Rose 1845, there's just something so different about this that I really, really like. So yeah, those are my choices. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.